Okay, so welcome back and this is a video response to the last video I made where I forgot to tell folks that I, I, I always shoot JPEG because in uh, my line of work there's no point in shooting RAW but uh, a lot of people had questions when it comes to Nikon Z9 uh, noise what if you shoot RAW? Because for example, uh, do these settings, the sharpening settings especially, do they apply when you shoot RAW? If you import an image into, uh, you know, Lightroom or whatever your post-processing software is, um, are, are those settings that are set in camera, are they also set in the file or can you change them after the fact? Is it like just a pure RAW file with no settings or parameters adjusted that's uh that's that's in the file imported into the computer so to try and answer this question uh, because you know people have a lot of questions a lot of suggestions i tried to download a dxo raw, pro raw processor and uh, or actually a dxo processor and I'm going to compare it to importing it in uh, importing a raw file in Lightroom, importing a raw file in DxO, and putting a raw file into the proprietary Nikon software. I'll put chapter markers in the video so you can just skip to whatever part you need to get whatever information you need. You don't need to go through the whole thing. So to start off first, um, let me see some notes I took. And uh, so First of all, yeah, so if you shoot JPEG, then obviously whatever uh, settings you set in the picture controls in the camera, those are set forever. Um, you can't, you, whatever you do is going to be additive and it's not going to be uh, changing the file, it's just going to be adding to the file, meaning if you change sharpening, if you up the sharpening or lessen the sharpening, contrast, everything is just going to be added and to the information that is already there but of course if you shoot raw then obviously you have file that is not pure information but it, that is pretty much as pure as you can get from a uh, regular camera like the Nikon Z9 um, someone also mentioned raw is raw, uh, meaning you know raw is pure information. Well, that is not the case. I have to make this side note uh, because what happens in any camera that is digital, with you know one or two exceptions there, like the old Sigma camera that has three sensors, uh, any camera with a Bayer type sensor construction. Uh, the basic information actually is just black and white or shades of gray and then there's a filter in front which is has red green and blue um, color filters or little lenses or whatever and that helps the camera determine or calculate what kind of color a pixel is going to be so there's always some form of processing going on there's no such thing as a as a pure raw or pure file that is just data coming out of any, you know, consumer or professional camera with, you know, just the very odd exception here or there. So that said, um, if you want the most pure processing possible, it's always best to use the manufacturer's proprietary software. So in the case of Nikon, this is Nikon NX Studio, which will, of course, import the file in the way that Nikon intended to be. So the way their own software engineers or their own mathematicians, whatever, you know, it is the magic recipe they have uh, in there going on and the camera algorithm is the same in that software, which is not given to any third parties like DxO or uh, Adobe or whatever. So that's the purest way to deal with a file. And usually if you want to have the most information, the best quality information, it's, it's best to process raw files first in Nikon NX or the manufacturer's proprietary software, but that of course is not always practical. Uh, I mean, most options out there for uh, software options are very high quality and unless you're pixel peeping or really just want the purest colors because you're photographing for a museum archive or whatever, um, you can just get away with using almost any type of software that's out there in 2023. So um, that said, to start off with, um, just to get to the point, uh, I'll, I'll start summarizing this briefly. 
If you shoot RAW, yes, you can change everything after the fact, but only in Nikon NX software for as far as it is the exact same settings as the camera itself offers. So, if you want to change basic sharpening, mid-level sharpening, clarity, contrast, color tone, whatever, the way Nikon intended, use Nikon NX software. It has the same exact algorithm, same exact controls as in the camera. And I will also, at the end of this video, uh, make a little explainer on where these settings are and how to change them in your Nikon Z9. And it's pretty much the same for the Z6, Z, etc. So that said, you can also import RAW files uh, in, for example, software like DxO Mark or Adobe Camera Raw. Those pieces of software don't have the exact same controls as does Nikon software, obviously, because these are proprietary controls and Nikon is not giving away their, uh, you know, secret recipes, their algorithms with their mathematics or whatever. But you can effectively process the file. So what you will get, first of all, even if you shift, uh, set, even if you set the sharpening to its highest value in the camera, but you shoot raw, you'll get a file that is unaffected by these settings when you import it into any software. Unless you import it directly, for example, Lightroom, because Lightroom doesn't pass it through a raw processor first, unless you choose um, to use Adobe Camera Raw first. But if you import it to Lightroom, it's going to be effectively like a JPEG file. The sharpening is there, the contrast is there, etc. So you just get what you get. You get more information than in the JPEG because there's much less compression going on, but you can't change the sharpening um, in any meaningful way, for example. But if you import it in, for example, DxO, Adobe Camera Raw, or other raw processors that are there, then you get pretty much the basic file that is supplied out of camera without any settings applied. So that means you get a quote-unquote soft-looking image, or noisy image, and you can have it processed to a, to a high degree with a very, very high level of quality. So to show you some examples, I downloaded a, I mean, I don't use a raw processor, so I downloaded a free version of DxO, um, what, what are the DxO Pure Raw is called. And uh, as you can see here, on the left hand side is the file as it is out of camera. On the right hand side, because here's this swiper, which lets you see the processed image as DxO processes it and the unprocessed image. That said, before I show you the results, I have to say, even in Nikon Viewer, still I like the file better. So there's even some processing going on as a RAW file when it is imported into DxO. The colors are not exactly the same, the quality of the noise or the, or the uh, whatever it applies, it's different mathematics still. So that goes back to the point I made earlier for the best type of processing, the most authentic type of processing, use the manufacturer's proprietary software. Because as you can see, this file, this is the same exact picture shot in uh, NEF, so the Nikon, what is it, electronic format or the Nikon RAW format anyway. And look at the color compared to the same exact file imported to DxO RAW. That's this. It's more noisy, the color isn't the same, the gradation isn't as smooth, but most importantly, there's a lot of color noise, which you can see here in the darker areas, here, here, and I don't like it as much. So DxO is obviously having to do some sort of processing beforehand, so you don't get the same exact raw file as you would get as if you would import into Nikon. You can also see the noise here, actually a lot of color noise. I'm surprised how much color noise is going on the DxO file. Here in these black areas, in the color checker, here on the black cardboard, uh, here around the letters. And so there's, a, there's already a lot going on that, uh, you know, DxO has to do itself. It's not the same file. It's not the same exact thing. Uh, look again how smooth this file is. So yeah, that's another thing. Raw processors are slow, or at least Nikon software is slow. Um, look at this dark area compared to this dark area. So here, 
So maybe in pure terms, the amount of noise itself is not that much more, but there's definitely a lot more color noise. Uh, if you look at this area here, there's almost no color noise here. There's obvious color noise. Also in the background here, yellow, blue, whatever's going on. And here it's just gray the way it's supposed to be. Um, that said, I am thoroughly impressed with how DxO does their magic. So um, I processed the file. It takes about two minutes for a file. So this is an Icon Z9. So it's a whatever, 25 megabyte, uh, 20 sorry, 25 megabyte file of the 45 megapixel sensor that the camera has. And once I swipe to the left to reveal the magic, you can see it brings up, and this is ISO 6400. So this is where the Nikon Z9 starts to get significantly more noisy. Um, and it brings out an extremely smooth file. And I'm very impressed. So it doesn't look too unnatural, too artifacty, and I'm actually surprised how well uh, the processor has done his job because it looks as good or better than a ISO 100 file. So that's like, uh, you know, 6432, 16, 842, I don't know, that's like five, six tops difference, right? That's almost from the base camera setting to sort of where the really high, high settings start to take effect. So it, it looks, I mean, absolutely clean and there's almost zero noise left in the image. And it looks, in my opinion, a tad bit over sharpened, which I will show here. So for example, here, these eyebrows here on the uh, rounded edges of the cardboard, um, and in some of these letters also, you can see stair-stepping. So there's some form of anti-aliasing going on. So I have a suspicion that actually the way it resolves uh, the noise of the artifacting is actually by applying some sort of anti-aliasing, which I don't know, doesn't seem like a very sophisticated manner, but it, but it works. So the thing is, you won't see this unless you look at the file at 100%. Uh, and then, you know, you could see here, for example, these these hair lashes, I mean, they're they're basically ruined because they're stair stepping going on. You can obviously see it at 100%. That said, I mean, if you go to, oh, sorry, this is two to one. So let's go to smaller magnification. So let's say we go to 12 to one. No, we don't want that. We don't want to magnify any further. We actually want to go, uh, let's see if, uh, oh. so I don't know how to zoom out in DxO, but I'm pretty sure uh, if you would print this and you look at normal viewing distance, it would look absolutely gorgeous. So if you use something like DxO or maybe Topaz Raw or Topaz AI, whatever it's called, you can get mind blowing results for sure. The color gradations look good. I like the way the colors look. Um, I mean, they, they don't look too artificial, too, too processed. Um, the edges are, I mean, if I'm really critical, I can see stair-stepping right here around the cheek. And then here there's some muddying of, of the edges. But all that said, I mean, it's a processed image, right? And I I don't think DxO allows you to change parameters. You're just stuck with the, there's two types of processing, like a super kind and a normal kind. And then it just does what it does. Uh, Topaz AI, the other uh, you know noise processing software, which also uses artificial intelligence, it apparently lets you vary the uh, parameters, uh, parameters, and um, but from what I read, um, DxO is quite a bit faster, almost twice as fast, one one and a half times as fast. Sorry, um, and um, the, the quality from, from what I read so far, people have compared Topaz AI and DxO. Uh, the DxO tends to look a little bit better than the, uh, tends to pull out details better than uh, Topaz AI does. I've used Topaz AI both on pictures and video, and I think for video it's very impressive, and for photos less so. I mean, for all the hype about artificial intelligence, what I think Topaz AI tends to do, it makes um, pictures look painterly. So. Wherever there's a lot of detail, yes, it sort of ups the micro contrast, so it makes detail more prevalent. But it actually, especially the more noise there is, the more just smudges out details. And it's really not much different than 
um, noise processing in Lightroom itself. When I compared the two, I had a free trial of Topaz AI. I couldn't notice much difference, and I don't think Topaz AI was much better. Um, you know, and, and let's be honest, Lightroom has, or Adobe has years and years of experience with processing image, and I trust they're not far behind Topaz AI. Topaz AI just makes a big deal of marketing um, artificial intelligence. Um, that's like their marketing shtick. But I think for all practical purposes, um, if you don't want to spend money, Lightroom does probably 90-99% of what Topaz AI uh, can do. Um, and if you really want to get a step, step above, if you really want to do noise processing then and, and sharpening especially, then I would, I would recommend personally DxO. I'm thoroughly impressed. So the downside, like I'm saying, is you get stair stepping, so which means it's either over sharpened or it just means that that is the result of the method they use to, to hide noise and um, do after the fact sharpening. But then again, as I said, in, in practical circumstances, if you were to make a print of this, you know, a giant print, people are not going to look up close, you know, from like this distance, um, from, from a distance which is just, you know, two fingers away. Uh, they're going to look from one, two meters away, you know, three, four, five, six feet. They're never going to see it. And the results are, are really great. The only thing is, yeah, it takes about two, mi two, two minutes for an image. So you have to have the time. In my work, uh, I, I don't. Images, you know, have to get there as fast, have to be sent as fast as possible. And, it's, and really, it's, noise is not a big deal. But for, for every other kind of photography, I mean, you know, portrait photography, art photography, whatnot, um, I, this is probably a very handy tool and I'm especially impressed because it doesn't look like any details are smudged over. It looks very natural and there's, there's nice color gradations and even in the highlights, which uh, you can see here on the lips, you can see that these are pretty nice gradations. The edges aren't too uh, harsh when going to the absolute blown out bits from the mid, let's say mid range or you know, highlight bits. You see that in the lip, the top of the lip here. So it, it, it is a very, very impressive uh, result. And I like the way it resolves the details in these letters. Um, it definitely looks a lot better than if you would ramp up the sharpening in camera. So ramping up the sharpening in camera, I will show I also did that. So I have examples here where I put, for example, uh, sharpening to the maximum. And that should be this one. So this is basic sharpening in camera in the Nikon Z9 set to maximum, which is nine. And the other mid-range sharpening and the clarity is set at zero. And you get a decently smooth image, but you can definitely see a lot of this blocky artifacting. So again, this is a raw file. So import it to NX Viewer into the Nikon software. You can tone this down and it will look like this image, which has all sharpening set to zero. So what happens if we set it to the minimum? So I'll turn down clarity, turn down mid-range and turn down uh, basic sharpening. And it takes a while to process. So first of all, this looks horrible. And that's because clarity is set to zero and clarity affects overall sharpening. And basically what turning clarity further down below anything uh, below zero, is just not worth it. I would say it's only worth it if you're into that sort of thing where you're making portraits and you want to avoid having any skin detail or skin blemishes showing up and you don't want to do that in post-processing. In that case, it can help. But other than that, it just makes things uh, look like they were shot through, uh, you know, a piece of cloth, basically, or a bad lens. So turn sharpening back, or sorry, clarity back to zero and you get a pretty decent looking image for ISO 6400, which mind you is still quite high sensitivity. It's quite high amplification that's going on in the camera. There is some noise. I think a lot of people, this is, uh, you know, below their expectations, what kind of noise they're willing to accept. For me, because I work in news photography, this type of news is absolutely no issue and actually is much, much better than what we've had to deal with in the past and, and you know, uh, it's it's great basically, but maybe for more commercial purposes, you don't want any noise. So 
but this is what it will look like with mid-range sharpening set to minus 5 with this lowest setting and basic sharpening set to minus 3, the lowest sharpening. Uh, when I set both to 0, then let me see, it's processed, then you, you start to see that, yeah, uh, artifacting is, is just obvious. But th mind you, this is 100%. If we zoom out to a regular view, it actually looks really good. You almost don't see the noise. And mind you, this is the size. Let's say this is a 5K monitor. So this image is, uh, let's say, 2,000, 2,500 pixels wide, just guessing. Um, this is, you know, bigger even than on most web services or websites. Anyone would see this image and it looks virtually noise free. So you can get away with uh, not doing anything about the noise in camera. It will look fine for 90% of what images are used for these days, which is on iPads, phones, computer screens, etc. But if you have a very demanding client and you don't want any noise, then I, there's just no way, uh, you know, getting around using a uh, a processor like the XOMark um, or just using um, noise processing in Lightroom. So, um, but first of all, just, just another uh, thing, if we zoom this back to 100%, which is here, 100%, if we leave the regular sharpening on, but we turn down the mid-range sharpening to minus 5, then already you have a much smoother looking image, as you can see here. And um, with actually almost, I would say, absolutely minimal noise. I mean, of course, it's not the same as the DxO image, but I would say it looks really good. Um, plus, I think for most commercial applications, you're not shooting at 6400, but then again, um, if you're shooting wildlife for commercial applications, then maybe sometimes you're forced to use high sensitivity settings in camera because uh, you need high shutter speeds or you have a very long lens that is not very light sensitive. So, um, I would, in any case, I would always start out with having the best ca in camera settings. So uh, camera battery died, so I had to restart the whole thing because the Z6 loves to munch batteries uh, when in video mode, unfortunately. Anyway, so as I was saying, if you're shooting for commercial purposes and you definitely don't want any noise, use a processor like DxO Mark or use Lightroom processing, but import it through uh, NX Viewer first. So you can adjust settings as you want, but uh, for the most practical purposes, uh, I think it's always a good idea to have the best settings in camera first, knowing that you can adjust almost anything if you shoot raw after the fact anyway. But even then, if you shoot raw, having the best starting position allows you to spend less time in post-processing. And as always, the more information you get out of camera, um, the more, uh, the, I mean, the more possibilities you have after the fact. So, and to recap also using, you know, uh, propriety software versus using uh, other commercial software, as you can see, these two files are exactly the same. And as you can see, a lot more color noise here than here. And let me see, I think even or let me double check. So set this at three, which is the default. So if you compare the Nikon NX file, which, so this file is the same as this file, but as you can see, DxO just interprets the file in a way that produces a bunch of color noise. This can be seen here and in the eyes even, in the dark areas. And let me see, because another thing is, let's check for blotchiness. So, yeah, there isn't... I mean, it looks a little bit blotchy here in the dark air area, which is something to watch out for always. And the background is quite noisy. I mean, in, in, the, in the terms of color noise, so I definitely like the background better in the original file or as it is processed by uh, Nikon itself. 
But then again, the results, the processing results are really impressive because again, if you look at the way it processes, it looks naturally sharp. It looks as if there's a lot of detail going on uh, and the color is very nice. So yeah, uh, I hope that answers your questions. What happens to settings when you use a RAW file versus a JPEG? This is what happens and I will try now to show how and where to find these settings and how to change them. So first I'm going to show you what it's like on Nikon View software because in Nikon software it's exactly the same as it is in camera in terms of um, the, the basic settings. So here you have the sharpening settings and it's the same in camera. First of all you have a quick sharpening setting which if you change it, it changes all three of the sharpening settings beneath. So it's like a preset. So you can set that to zero and then it changes everything to default where these little arrows are, which for Nikon is sharpening set halfway, uh, sorry, uh, halfway between minimum and maximum. For some reason, maximum is nine and minimum is minus three. Who knows why, even though the little dots in the middle, mid-range sharpening is at uh, two and clarity set to one. So the setting I like, which looks is the best balance in my view between having a um, out of camera pretty sharp looking image but very very little noise and very nice color gradations is uh, I said the uh, basic sharpening to minus one and mid-range sharpening to minus five because mid-range sharpening is sort of the culprit in the sort of roughness of an image the one that pops out the most or is most visible to the human eye and the clarity, I believe I set to zero or minus one, one of those two settings, I think it's zero. Uh, and that pretty much makes for a very nice out of camera image. So if you have to shoot JPEG, I would use those settings. So basic sharpening minus one, mid-range sharpening all the way down to minus five and the clarity at zero. Um, then, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna talk about contrast, brightness, saturation, hue here for the moment. Uh, that's pretty much it when it comes to sharpening and you can use these same values when uh, shooting raw because if you import it into Lightroom it will have the look that that kind of sharpening it has applied to it in camera because Lightroom cannot take the file at is as if those were baked in settings unless you first process it in Adobe Camera Raw or another raw processor so if you want to use Lightroom to adjust your color or whatever editing you need to do, but you're not sure about the sharpening settings, then go through, uh, you know, Nikon uh, NX software or DxO and then process it further. But if you need to be quick and for, you know, just want to be practical, these are good settings just for to have a picture to, to work with from the get go. Um, that said, now I'm going to show you how that works in camera and um, thanks for watching this video. So I hope you guys can see this. Um, so first of all, I have uh, image quality settings so, or the um, picture profile option set in the I menu. So that's when you press the I button on your camera and in the quick menu, which you can access from anywhere at any time, then you go here to picture profile or set picture control. And now it's on SD for standard. Then you press the center uh, or OK button on the back of your camera. And then if you press the arrow down, it allows you to set all the parameters for the settings. So here you have the quick sharpening setting, which lets you modify all three basic sharpening settings in one go. So as you can see here, uh, first it asked me if I want to get rid of the settings I put there manually myself, so yes. So you can see here quick zero and it changes all the settings beneath there. So that is a handy way to quickly set settings. But I mean, I didn't check out what all those different settings are. And to be honest, I just like to set my own. But by default, I think it's set on, I don't know. I think this is like the default, so zero. But here you can change basic sharpening. And that I said it's always set at three, normally set at three, and it can go as high as nine. Uh, and that gives you a lot of fine detail, but also, of course, shows more noise in images. I tend to set this one to minus one because I want some detail 
but I don't want it to affect too much any artifacting. Then mid-range sharpening, that is the most important one because that is the one that results in very visible uh, artifacting at higher ISOs. So that one I set to the absolute minimum of minus five. And then this is clarity. And with clarity, I would never go below zero because it makes your images look as if they were shot through a piece of cloth or with a bad lens. It just makes everything very, very soft. It looks kind of ridiculous. So I just set that to zero. I wouldn't go below zero. Setting it higher makes the image look a bit more contrasty. It's a bit like using um, the, uh, the, the clarity setting in Lightroom a little bit, but it sort of tends to thicken edges, so I would watch out with that. I just set it to zero, and so this minus one, minus five, zero, that makes for a very pleasing image. And so, as I said, these images are applied uh, no matter if you set your, uh, if you shoot JPEG or if you shoot, shoot uh, RAW, it's uh, all the same. The only thing is with JPEG, you can't change anything after the fact. I mean, you can make your images look sharper by applying, let's say, an unsharp mask or whatever, but it adds to whatever is already there. So if you already have artifacts, it's going to make uh, exaggerate artifacts as well. So yeah, if you shoot with RAW, it, it's going to look a lot, lot, lot nicer because you're going to have a, a much more uh, untouched image to start off with. So as you guys can hopefully see, um, this is the regular image. And I have settings set to minus five, minus, uh, minus one, minus five, and zero. And then this is pretty much what that looks like in real life when you're, as you can see, it looks pretty sharp, it looks very smooth. This is ISO 6400. Um, but if we were to change that to, you can see the uh, change is being applied immediately. We change quick sharpening to, let's say, a higher setting. So uh, a very high setting. You can immediately see the changes already there. You can see this image compared to the last one is less saturated. The edges are thicker, um, as you can see. So the whole image has changed. And that's basically what the what the effect are. You can see more detail in the brows also now than before, um, but still not a lot of noise going on. You'll see that noise mostly probably when you import it into the computer and you look at it on your monitor. Uh, you can see some noise in the dark part uh, below the eyebrow, between the eyebrow and the eye. And let me see. So if we change that to even more sharpening, so let's say we put mid-range sharpening to max, Standard sharpening to max, but and clarity to zero, just see the, to see the effect of the basic sharpening. You can see the it looks a bit, you know, it looks quite artifacty. So look, let's look at the eye here. Um, so I, you can see there is quite blotchy noise again between the eyebrow and the eye, and you can even see it on the eyelashes, which look quite rough, and and, and you, you can see some stair stepping. Uh, and um, then if we change that to quick sharpen, let's see, to, yes, lose it. Um, let's just use a quick sharpening and it set it to minus five, minus one, minus one. And then the image looks a lot, lot smoother already. If we magnify it, you can see it looks a lot, lot nicer. There's much, much uh much less noise at least apparently you know obviously visible there if you look at the same area between the eye and the eyebrow and if you yeah, you can see still see some stair stepping in the eyelashes but i don't know if that's the tv or what or maybe the sharpening setting still but then generally i think the color the saturation and the gradients look a lot lot better than compared to higher sharpening settings. And this is all in uh, RAW. So that's pretty much what you get when you change settings uh, on the Z9.